Hi everyone, it's Kelly from The Hub, here today with our friend Sue, who knows everything about glass. How are you there, Sue? We discussed that. Sue does not know. <laughs> she does. She knows a thimble. <laughs> and that's about it. Oh, so Sue has taught us, well, first of all, Sue is an artist that I feel like I have known my whole life. She is more than just glass. She, she can paint, she can draw, she can take photographs, she can sculpt, she can throw pots. Well, I don't know, she can design clothing out of un, unconventional things. Um, she can do anything with children. She can do anything with young adults. She can do anything with adults. She, she's kind and sweet and wonderful. Um, and you. so we are we are learning about, about glass together. Um, we've talked about what she, where her inspiration has come from and the way, all the different kinds of ways you can make glass look beautiful. And today we're doing the process. So when you take a piece of glass and then we're going to make it do all the stuff in the middle, which I know nothing about. And I'm so excited because I know nothing about the middle. And then the end is beautiful. So that's what we're going to learn about. Fingers crossed the end is <laughs> Yeah. So here we go. So we're going to, you take a piece of glass. Let's start with that. Okay. So my piece of glass, well, sorry to turn my back on you. It's okay. Started. The one thing I forgot to grab with these, these squares, I think Walmart sells these. I love these square glass plates because they sort of remind me of a, a frame. Yeah. That you could, put something in the middle of. So my, my idea when I saw these was, oh, ooh, frame flowers. I'll put the flowers in the middle and then I'll put the leaves around the outside. Wouldn't it be cool to do a series like that? So I bought a whole set of these and, and starting with the smaller ones. Oh, cool. This is one of my designs. So each, each plate, because I really, I'm not a fan of repetition. I wouldn't want to do a whole four piece place setting of all the same flowers. So these are honeysuckle. Oh. Now wait, are they upside down? Woohoo. Well, you know what? It's such a cool design. It doesn't matter which way it goes, but there's another one. And then I have two others, but they, they sort of take us on the road to where we go with the process. So I'll keep those hidden. Okay. Yeah. So then what's the brown stuff? Okay. T227. It, it's made by Anchor. There's other materials you can buy, but I like this one because it's relatively thin. And what's really cool about it, it's basically a, like a peel and stick. Oh, it's like contact paper. Exactly. Oh, oh, but it looks rubbery. It is very rubbery. Aha. Uh -huh. So that when I do a surface that's undulating or round or curved or whatever, I can do almost any surface and this will, as long as there's not a big jump from a bulbous area to a real skinny area, because then you've got extra, you know, like when you get old and you have to do a <laughs> Oh, got... <laughs> right. You don't want it there to be a big, like overlap that you would have to. Right. But, but sometimes, so like, even if you have to do a square, like when you sew, you would have to like cut that middle. You'd have to miter that corner. There's always a seam. There's oh, okay, always... right. So where, unless I'm doing a big flat piece like these plates. Okay. Um, where it overlaps, I do my best to press the first seam down. And as I bring it around and, and seal it down on the piece, I'll press really hard and especially along the seam to see if I can't, because there's a, a depth to it. So when you overlap, you've got that little step there. And even though it's minuscule, if, if the sandblast medium can find a space to creep in, it will creep in. Oh, okay. okay. So overlapping, I try to keep to a minimum. But what's cool, I mean, it's got a little stretch to it. Oh, so if you've got, if you need to make adjustments, it can, it can work with you to do that. Okay. It can. So the first thing I do with this is cover, 
cover whatever piece I'm doing. Okay. So the plates were relatively easy, except for when I got to the corner, I wanted to expose this corner bead. Oh, oh, neat. Yeah. Because I'm going to blast that too. So you've made like a frame within a frame within a frame. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Neat. So the next step is to, to draw your design on there. And I usually do that in pencil, oh. unless I'm doing a, a repetition where I make a tracing and, and repeat that way. I'll do it in pencil and then I'll go back with a fine line ballpoint pen because I'm, I'm crazy about, you know, keeping the design tight and, and being able to see it. Once I've done all that, I'm just gonna roll along here. Yeah, I, I pull out my high end readers that go on top of my handy bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> it's a look, it's a look. It's a look. <laughs> And then I take my X-Acto knife and I can't do this airbound. So we're gonna pull you down here and I will go around whatever areas or lines I want to cut first. And then, so this is the point where you make the decision, are you gonna do relief or are you gonna do the design, like the object, are you, right? Are you right. gonna do, yeah. So since these are white forget-me-nots, I decided I would do a, a really thin outline, which is, yeah, you can see it, okay. Which is exactly like the width of the ballpoint pen. It's really oh. amazing. That they, and then you like, if I caught it now, grab the corner of that and peel it up. Oh, you're gonna do an outline wow crazy so uh, this stuff is so good that you can be that precise with it exactly so i will say this back in the day day i did sandblasting in industrial arts and mm -hmm. we sandblasted huh because it was we used tape like masking tape it works and it worked but it, you masking tape isn't so good of a medium and you can't you it's just you couldn't get that exact of a and we were in seventh grade and didn't know what the hell we were doing so this base that you use is you can do a lot more with it and it's it will withstand a, a pounding like I okay. shoot at, for anyone that knows pressure square inch that sort of thing at, at 60 psi's sometimes 80 which is a lot and and for that kind of pressure you need a medium that's not going to break down I've used masking tape if I just need to do a little touch up oh okay and then just that's usually around 40 psi's a little and then lightly blast over it. So masking tape isn't god awful. I mean, kids at school used it when we ran out of the the stencil stuff. But oh, okay. So okay. So thank you for uh, thank you for being smart and knowing that stuff. So that's oh. that's what it is. It's the it's the medium. The medium can withhold the dent the the pressure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's really great. I really never blasted so hard that I, I mean, I've had really thin lines when you when you push the boundaries of how much you have left there to blast around. If it's too thin, sometimes that air pressure will will blow it aside. But you know what I mean? I mean, a yeah, thin yeah, yeah. line like this has support, like that little line I just cut has support yeah. around it. But right. if I was doing the opposite and just leaving a really thin line there and then expecting it not to blow away eventually or not to move, sometimes oh. it moves. Oh, so if you just left the opposite and you just left that thin line, you would know that you could only blast it a little bit as opposed to making it, so you would have a, you would have a, a lighter blast Correct. rather than a darker blast because yeah, the not as deep, can't not as... hold it. Okay. Okay. I get that. Okay. So you just, you just then proceed to 
exacto the whatever you want with all the bits. Yeah, I lay out my game plan. I know what I'm going to blast first. And if it's a multiple blast, sometimes it's just a high contrast, dark and light, and it's one blast and done. But huh. if I know it's going to be something multiple, so this I did this morning. And let's see if I can get more light on this. There we go. Oh, those are snow bells. What are those called? Yeah, little Lily of the Valley. Oh, Lily of the Valley, right. Yeah. Yeah, they look like snowdrops. But oh, snowdrops, yeah. Okay. You had it, right? Right, you know. Oh. So wait, so oh. that medium looks different. That's it's all gray. The more you blast it, sometimes that's how I gauge the depth. The more I blast, the darker the medium gets. It's no longer beige. That oh, pretty okay. Beige. It's a nasty gray. Oh, okay. Because of the blast medium. Oh. So this is this is after my first blast. Oh, so you did you did that whole mm -hmm. that whole plate at the same hmm, level. Yes. You can oh, see okay. the sides are all frosted now. Oh, oh, I see that. Okay. So the border I did is all frosted. Yep. And there's that. So this one is ready to go into phase two because my, my game plan was to make the little lily of the valley flowers all white. Yep. So that'll be the number two blast. And then the leaves are a darker green. But for the value of that, I'm going to wait, blast the flowers. I'll probably cover this then so that I don't disturb what I've already blasted and like. And then oh. I'll go to the outside and I'll start peeling the leaves around the outside. So then if you want to cover it, what do you, do you just put another layer of it on? No, nope, I use my favorite uh, cost-effective uh, frog tape. Is that the name of it? It's green. Oh, like just regular. I love this stuff. Oh, just regular stuff. Yes. Just regular tape. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Literally frog tape. Funny. Plus I love the color. I don't know. That has nothing to do with it. But. <laughs> So the next step would be to go back and just grab these little lily of the valleys. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it's time consuming. The more intricate, the more detailed the design, right. the longer it takes to right. peel these puppies off. But I mean, but that, but that medium also comes up well. You don't have it to, does. like, masking tape can also be a little, ugh. Yeah, this has no residue when yeah, you peel yeah, it. Yeah. It peels clean. And you can see some of the little detail I put in there, the little white. Yeah, it's not that little, yeah, the little shadow or whatever you, you want to call it. You can hear it as you dip in there. Ooh, yeah. It was a good blast. So, so I'll keep going on these. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to do the whole plot. That yeah. would be, we're going to do like they do on the cooking shows. Yeah, Man, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, now the next step. Right. Uh, and then I would go back into the sandblaster. To make those bolder. Those will be all frosted white. Not okay. as deep as the original. Right. But deep enough so that it's a nice solid coating and, and you get a nice white appearance to it. Cool. So, I mean, I sent you, maybe now would be a good time to show everybody the sure. crazy box it goes into. Cool, I will, I will share my screen and show you guys what Sue uses to show, to make it. All right, do you want this one? Yeah, this is, this is, the, this is the plate that it's in. This is, is that the one or do you want the other That's one? The well, we can start there and then okay. back out. That's the inside of the box. So I'm standing on to the left of the, the handle there, if it's that's how it's coming up. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. And my hands go through two holes in the front of it into those gloves. And oh, then the okay. gun. Oh, so this is, is like built in, like it's a, like it's a, like it's a baby NICU thingy. Exactly. It's okay. all self-enclosed, very tightly self-enclosed because the, the dust that comes off is literally glass dust and you do not want to breathe that. 
Right, because it'll like tear up your lungs like it's insulation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, cancer, nasty stuff. So I wear a respirator as well, even though I have a dust collector on it that collects 99.9% .9 of whatever and still wear a respirator and ear protection. Oh, cool. And then that's, that's one of the plates that's in. Well, that's my pedestal that I built. Oh, oh, that's your pedestal that's in there. And then you, you put whatever's on it on top of right. this. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm only five, four and I have a little step thing to step up to get into the door so I can, yeah. <laughs> Vertically challenged. <laughs> and then this is what it looks like from the outside. There you go. It's a beast of a thing. You see my little step up there. Oh, so this is, these are the armholes. Right. And this is like your viewing box. Okay, this looks. <laughs> Scary, this looks, isn't it? Well, it looks nuclear. Nuclear. It's a beast. It looks like you're, like you're, like you're a mad scientist. It's fabulous. <laughs> it really is cool. And is this the dust collector? It is. Oh, Inside that collector are a series of vertical bags, tubes. Cool. Uh, I think there's three rows of them that go all the way down. So the dust goes in through that tube, the black tube there. And then um, in the big box, it collects in those tubes. Oh, I have cool. not filled them. I mean, eventually you have to, you know, take them out and dump them safely. Right, like it's like if it's a vacuum cleaner bag. Right, exactly. Right. In the back, there's a little handle that you don't see down behind Pee Wee Herman there, sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. There's, there's a little handle that you shake to get the dust to go down those tubes and, and oh. keep it running efficiently. On the floor, there's like a, it looks like a rat trap or something, but that's a, a little box with a gas pedal in it. Oh, down here? Mm-hmm. So that's how I control the gun. When I step on the gas pedal, oh. it shoots the gun. Oh, wow. It's, it's a really efficient system. The big hopper behind the green hose yeah. is where it stores the medium. So it, it shoots the medium out and the bottom of the unit is graded. Shoots the medium out onto whatever you're blasting, drops the medium back down into that hopper, and yeah. then it like regurgitates it back out again and it recycles it. So it's very efficient. Okay. I'm just going to be really, I, I just want to know. And so ballparkish, how much is something like this <laughs> to buy? Um, just, I mean, just so that like. One uh, used so Toyota Tacoma truck. Like that's when I retired, I sold my, my truck which I loved, uh, yeah. And I purchased, but it wasn't only that. To the left of that is a, a huge air tank that I have. And then I have a very large compressor because of the amount of pressure you use, the compressor, an ordinary compressor would run constantly. So I had, to, I, I purchased a big and all included, I, I think it was 12 grand that it cost me for the whole, but I mean, to downsize, you don't need this size. You could put a small child in there. Not that you would, but <laughs> it's large. It's about four feet long and, and six feet tall. And I wanted to be able to, I, we had one before up at school and it was just too, you would get pieces and they just wouldn't fit through the door. And I thought right. I'm not gonna run into that where I wanna do something large or a, right. a, a relatively big pane of glass or something. Right. So yeah, I mean, they start, if you're just experimenting, you know, you can get one for a few hundred dollars. Right. But, but this size allows you to do almost anything you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Except for a very large, I mean, if somebody wanted a window pane at a store or something. Right. There's remote units you can buy, but I'm just not. Yeah. Well, and, you know, j just like when, when we interviewed my cousin, who's, who's just started out as a, a, a potter, 
she didn't buy a kiln she knows someone who has a kiln so she like rents you know she pays her kiln friend money to borrow kiln time it, i mean same same i mean there are people who who could say to you hey can i black can i have five hours of blast time or whatever i mean you know, there's sure. you know that that's that's how sometimes that works in in these kinds of of like t of like places that there's that you know artists do that with each other because that's how you wouldn't be able to start as an artist any other way it's absolutely it's i mean i was fortunate enough to have <laughs> something i could sell off because i i really wanted to do this yeah. i really wanted to make the investment but yeah. Sure, Goggle Works rents out absolutely a space. Yeah, that you pay a monthly fee and you can go in and do pottery and yeah, absolutely. And I was even open to the idea of allowing people in here, you know, serious that were interested in it. Yeah, until COVID hit and that was sort of the end of that thought. Right. For now. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so. That's that's what it all looks like, and now we see that stuff. All right, so next step, we will. I will unshare. Okay, here we okay. are. So we've, so we can do as many parts, as many like layers as we would, as you would want. And we saw that last time when we when you showed us the peapod one, that there were. Right you can have you know ver you know variegated layers it'll variegated yeah layers and different ways that you can show all of that kind of stuff like you know depths of of the of the blast sure absolutely so i mean the flowers will be next yep i'll cover that if i'm happy with it and then i'll go into the leaves and i'll do a very light and then pull another layer of leaves so i have one, two, three, three more blasts. I mean, eventually it gets to the point where you won't tell the difference. Like they'll be so close in value that it won't matter how much you blast it. I mean, you just, you can't take it any further. And then in the end, I mean, here's one that's finished. one of my series, ground covered dogwood. But you can see the different layers. I was gonna say, you can tell the levels on that. Mm -hmm. So the whitest area, it's almost a reverse. You would think the more you blast, the darker it would look, but it's, it's a reverse process. Yeah. The whitest areas are the first blast, the deepest. And then as it progresses up, the leaves, some of these leaves barely, like I hold it far away and just a quick blast and, and get a dusting. It's amazing how little a blast will have an effect. Just, just the finest dusting will make it change so that you can tell the difference between clear glass, which is that little triangle. Right. And then right inside the leaf, that was like lightly, very lightly dusted. Huh. Huh. Yeah, it's... That's it's interesting. So neat. Thanks. It's really, it's, and so this series, this, this set. Right. Are four different, are four different flowers. Yeah, there's the a front Flowers in, you know, the inside, the leaves that correspond with them are in the. Primed out, green. right. And I thought that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, that's there. It is. It's, it's a cool, I mean, like the concept's cool. Like the concept's cool. The design is cool. And then like how you, how you do the, the process is also cool. Like that's neat. That's, that's what keeps me loving it. If it gets boring and I'm still trying to think outside the box, you know, what other ways can I put textures on the surface? The sandblaster will change values, but it doesn't change the textures unless you use, you change the medium and go heavier or finer. But that's a, that's a huge mess. Right, because you said when you 
have new huh, new grit it's mm -hmm. heavier and so it's oh, it's it's, it's, it's rittier, new, right it's thicker it's, yeah yeah it's, it hasn't broken down yeah and if it's old grit it's finer good memory but if but then the only way you could oh, get it to be that way again is you'd have to <laughs> dump the hopper in oh god that would be yeah that you'd have to hire an assistant for that that's just that's a lot it would be so subtle that it would not be worth all the mess yeah so yeah, so I mean, acid etching gives you a really smooth, soft, frosted surface. So that's an alternative. I mean, I could grind away at it. That's an alternative, but we'll see. Oh, where this that leads. would be. So you could. So have you combined sandblasting with acid on pieces? I have. Mm -hmm. And do you like how that looks? I, I do, and I don't. Hmm. The acid doesn't come out as as smooth, like visually smooth. There's modulations, I think, in in the acid etching that I haven't quite figured out. Oh. So I don't know. And sometimes I'm a purist. You know, if I'm going to sandblast, let's sandblast. But sometimes, if I want to tone, yeah, I've used it successfully. I'll go back now. Okay. I like some of it. <laughs> yeah. Huh. It's just a different look. It's hard to describe. And I don't think I have anything here to show you. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, that was just a, I, I just thought about that as we were thinking, I'm like, huh, I wonder, like, that would be neat to see, like, or like, would an untrained, like, would I untrained, like, just look at a piece and go, mm, I can tell they got halfway through and looks like <laughs> someone didn't know what they were doing. You know, I don't know if I would ever be able to, you know what I mean? Like, evaluate that. Or could I, would I be able to evaluate it and go, oh, I can see that they added this extra texture of this element is acid and this element is sandblasted you know what if you closed your eyes and you ran your fingers across it you would be able to tell because the sandblasted is rougher and the the acid is smoother oh okay right. and it would it dips in it literally bites into the glass you would feel edges and oh oh okay so you could tell with your eyes you could tell by feel mm -hmm. huh huh that's interesting that's interesting. Oh, very cool. Huh. <laughs> so how, how long, how long would, so each of your, of your plates mm -hmm. are sort of the same in like level of detail. Correct. I mean, they're different, but they're, they're sort of the same. How Correct. long would a plate take ish? Well, I just cut the design on the Lily of the Valley last night and it took me three hours to cut, cut out all cut those little outlines around all those little flowers and yeah. And how long did it take to blast the dogwood? The first blast, oh, all inclusive. The first blast on the, I've never timed myself. I don't know, that's, I don't know why I can't, because people ask me. Yeah. And some cuts will take me days, but I'm not sitting at it, you know. Right. Well, because, so here's the thing, because I think that art is never priced based on hours, because if it was, you would never be able to afford art. That's quite true. And so, so I'm actually glad that you don't know, because that is, that's very telling. Don't tell us how much you're going to sell it for. But I think that that's, that's fascinating. How much ever you sell it for. And anybody who watches this should also be thoughtful about, hmm, 
anything that you buy that is handmade by the artist, you should say, hmm. Yeah. Well, I have a story. I'll make it quick. Oh, you don't have to make it quick at all. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I've gotten concerns from people when I sell my work, they're like, oh, it's too cheap. It's too cheap. So the story I always tell <laughs> is that I went to see an artist who I was in love with his works. Went to see an artist. I, I was just starting to teach and I had squirreled away a little bit of money and I figured, you know, just buy a print. And if he signs it, I don't want to say who it is because that's just not cool. When he signs it, I mean, I should be able to afford a print with a signature on. So went to see the person, got to shake his hand. I think I scared the bejeebers out of him because the next time I saw him, <laughs> he had a, a guard with him, like a bodyguard or something. Because I just ran over and said, oh, my God, I'm so, you know, love your work, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> One of those crazies. Well, I, I saw his, the prints, and I couldn't even afford the print. And I was, like, devastated. And I thought, my gosh, you know, they make thousands, billions of prints, just shagoom, shagoom, shagoom. Yep. Right. And for me to not even, I had to buy the program book that had like the catalog of everything he was selling. And then I thought, you know, you idiot, maybe I was naive and, and you know, didn't realize what the value of the work was. And I kicked myself, but I, that like stuck with me. And I thought, you know, if I do work, I'm never going to do that to somebody, make my work unobtainable for a hardworking, just, if somebody likes my work, I would rather drop the price of it so that they could afford it. I know, I know. There's artists out there shaking their heads and going, oh. But that's, but to me, I mean, so I, I feel the same way about art in my own little way. At the Hub, we started a gallery and my, my thought behind the gallery is- Oh, that you are not fribbling up on me, are you? A little because it's it's you know it's a thing because I started our gallery. <laughs> I started our gallery because I wanted to make sure that art was accessible to everybody because I there have been many times that I was with people and we were to and we and art was like man's inhumanity to man and it was this complicated I don't understand and why does it have to be so hard and and I didn't want to put I didn't want to make that like that for other people when they were trying to just see things and appreciate things and like things and that and I've seen things that people create from their soul that is artistic that other people would thumb their nose up at. And so the, that's why we I created this gallery to let everybody showcase what came out of their soul. And so I felt that, I feel that same way. However, I, I always, but I still want I still want artists to make money. So oh, it's hard to make a living with your art. And I, so yeah. that's, that's the hard part for me is that I want artists to still make a living. And uh, I know, well, so I know. I have a quick happy story though. <laughs> Ages ago, D'Addario and I were down at Penland, which is in North Carolina, a huge craft artist, like, um, yeah, place to go to learn. Yeah. And, and they had a studio tour. So we're touring and I'll try to make this short. And, and I find these pieces of glass in, in a box behind, there's a sandblaster in the place. And, and I find these cool looking pieces of glass, a half moon with things that look like udders and, and a small round thing with little, like I call them boobies, but I don't know what they were. <laughs> so I asked the guy, I'm like, are these scraps? You know, I'll, I'll pay you for the glass. I thought they were being thrown out. No, they belong to an artist named David Chat. 
And if I, you know, if God help, he sees this and, and I can apologize for what happened after this. <laughs> so I pick up these two udders and boobies and, and I take them with Diderio and they find the artist, David Chat, who does beadwork, extraordinary, like tiny little sculptural things where wow. these are glad, oh my God. I'm like, I found these, I don't know if they're trash. I figure you recycled them, could I pay you for them? He's like, well, you know, we do a recycle, but those were experiments for a piece he was doing, which was illuminated pieces in a, oh my God, they weren't. Okay, so I'm like, he's like, well, what will you give me for them? And I said, well, I'm a teacher, you know, you know, go easy on me. What would you ask for them? Right. And he's like, give me 35 bucks. And I'm like, I give him 40 bucks. <laughs> and looking back, I could kick myself. I give him 40 bucks. I'm, I'm tickled pink. Daddario and I, I like float out of the studio and I have my udders and boobies. And I take them to, I'm taking painting because I, I took a painting class there. I put it on my little easel thing and I'm, I'm looking at them and the guy says, maybe you don't want to put them there. And he hands me a catalog of work being sold at Penland. He's like, look look through here and then decide what you want to do with those and i look through the catalog and i find the udders and they're five thousand dollars and immediately <laughs> i felt like such an idiot this lovely man <sighs> sold me these and i fribble when i tell the story because <laughs> it was such an act of kindness right 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 sold me these two pieces for $40 right. and the one was worth right yeah right right and see that I feel the same way that when you get art from somebody that is affordable that comes from someone's soul you he knew I loved it he knew I loved those two pieces that it you are connected to that person you are connected and I Yes, yeah. that's exactly how I feel. Whew. It's yeah. not just something that sits in your house. It isn't. That's how I, I know. There's people who are like, please, it's a painting <laughs> on a wall, lady. That's, it's just not how I see it. I, I am connected to that artist when I have that piece that I see that thing. And I'm like, oh, it's, I, I don't know. It's like, uh, that's just how I, that's how I am. That's how I see it. Yeah, it's, it is. So it I is. took the piece off the easel. <laughs> and I was say, home, right, that. wrapped it up, hid it, and didn't tell anyone else I had them. Right. Yeah. And now it sits in a very nice place for you. Yeah, it's yeah. in the window at my bedroom. So I, every time I I did gift the one to a friend, yeah. a very very dear friend. Yeah. So, and I kept the others. <laughs> And you gave away the boobies. I did. That's awesome. That's so awesome. you can almost guess who I gave them to. I think I know exactly who you gave them to. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful. And she she loves them. I was going to say, good. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, so thank you very much for this. Um, there will be another one, I think. We've got, I think, a couple more things to talk about. Um this has been truly wonderful. I know there will probably be questions. So for those of you who have questions, feel free, put them in the chat, let us know about stuff and we will have Sue answer some for us. Absolutely. And we will see everyone next time. Bye everybody.